Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of ADS Public Sector Summit, live in Washington, D.C., two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Finally, great to be in person. We had a remote interview, so we have a hybrid event going on. We're streaming everything all over the place. Next guest is Matt Mangrock, who's the head of public sector at Zoom, a company that everyone loves, and have happy meetings, happy events. Great to see you. Thank you for having me today. So obviously, Zoom is in the center of all the action, pandemic. Everyone knows what's going on with Zoom. Household name, the company's exceptionally well on the performance side. What's going on in the public sector? It's exciting. You know, we've over the last 18 months, we've just exploded across all the marketplace, both in federal, state, local government, and education. And what's exciting is we've just scratched the surface for our customers. So if you look at what we've done in getting in front of inaugural events, courts, lit uh, legislation, uh, all kinds of other types of meetings and webinars, getting the message out around the pandemic. It's exciting to know that we have that opportunity to make a difference. Now, part of this whole thing around public sector is since we just scratched the surface, what's exciting is how do we start to look forward to the next 12, 24, 36 months in helping our customers? How do we really add value in accelerating that mission value for them? You know, Mark, it's interesting. There's two things that happened during the pandemic that I point to and I talk about all the time. The internet didn't break, so all those service providers that had the, the pipes, good job, packets were moving around, and Zoom, you guys really saved society and, and educated so many use cases, education, um, government, meetings, courtroom, never thought about the speeding tickets, people had to go free Zoom. All this stuff's happening. Now, you got a partnership with AWS. What's the next level? I'm assuming more immersion, more connections, more integration, what's the next, what's the plan? Great question. So, our next step is, we looked at this relationship, and we would go into customers and go in there. We go in there, and then they go in there. There wasn't any synergy. So what we decided to do is come together. So think about this, Zoom and AWS going to our public sector customers, bringing solutions and helping them evolve, innovate, and transform as they're evolving through this people-centric hybrid network or workplace journey that they're going through. And then the best part about this is these ecosystem of partners that help both of us yeah. and be a part of that process as well. Not to toot our own horn, but we just had a remote interview on Zoom connected to our gear here, here with a guest sitting right here, just now. That's, That's the kind of impact. How has that transformed some of the government agencies, like military, for instance? Great question. So we, we had, a, one of the things that the, uh, even back in April 2020, uh, the Air Force was recognized by military.com for recruiting and how they used to keep their numbers up to get in front of recruits. And think about this. If I'm a recruiter, I can't drive three hours to go see somebody, find out if they, if they can join or not and come back. Now they could use Zoom, something that people were comfortable with. Ease of use, simple, ingrained in the fabric of people's lives. Now they could have that, keeping their numbers up and being recognized by a two-star general for what they did around the recruiting and keeping the numbers up. All right, so I'll ask you, I know you have a federal background, you know the industry pretty well over the years. You've, done, you've seen the old way, now the new way. What's it like at Zoom, because you guys exploded onto the scene, been around for a while, but once you hit the, the tipping point, it was a rocket ship plus the pandemic. Now you come into federal. You got fed ramp issues. What's, I mean, what, what, what do you do? How do you get through all that? We were excited about the fact that we're really catapulted us. We were at fed ramp, impact level two moderate back in April of 2019. So what set the groundwork? So when the pandemic occurred, we were able to explode forward, help our customers. Now we've even looked past that and go, what do we do next? DOD impact level four. We have an authorization to operate with conditions from the Department of the Air Force. And it was set as we go through our provisional process with DISA. The exciting part is our customers can use this now. They have a set of conditions. Those conditions are basically guidelines on how to use and set up an IL-4 call. So just impact level four is just below top secret, if I understand that correctly, right? So impact level four allows our customers and the DOD to use it for CUI, which is controlled on classified information, or FOUO for official use, for official use only conversations. Got it, and there's six levels, right? Five, yes. Six is like the ultimate, like, Yes. Super top secret secret. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so four is good. It's very good. So this is interesting, in 2019, you mentioned that stat. That kind of highlights the whole cloud wave before the pandemic, the winners and losers. Start to see who was winning and who's losing. And I think a lot of agencies realize the ones that were in the cloud early, before the pandemic, and the ones that didn't get there fast enough are really lagging behind. What's your reaction to that? Well, you're absolutely right. And the interesting thing about the pandemic, what it brought forth is a horrible event. But what it brought forth was transformation that customers had to go through. So think of it this way. 
if a customer, you know, they were, had all this equipment sitting on staff, on site, and they had to go home. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, when they went home, legacy systems could not transform and allow them to evolve into this work, uh, this work from home environment. So what it brought forth are these, these systems that were just not capable of being able to scale, and all of a sudden, as they went forward, they were able to go ahead and us. For us, it was easy because easy use, scalability, innovation, extensibility, and security allowed us to really jump right in there. And as people I mentioned earlier, it became ingrained in the fabric of people's lives. So the ease of use for everybody made it easy for them to move home. Yeah, and that's a big, that's a big impact. All right, let me ask about the Amazon Marketplace, Amazon, AWS Marketplace. News there, share? Yeah, we're, we're excited. We announced uh, over the last two days, we've announced our, our relationship with uh, AWS and the AWS Marketplace via Kerasoft. So Kerasoft is a world-class public sector uh, distributor. The great relationship we have there that made, helped us really accelerate this relationship was Amazon already had that AWS Marketplace distributor. We had Kerasoft as our, our main distributor for all public sector, solar distributor. So the relationship already there and with the integration with Tackle.io allowed us to really accelerate this relationship and be able to transact for our customers. And you think about the transaction, now our customers can start to leverage AWS contracts and accelerate the pieces that they have across there. Talk about the Tackle I.O. piece. How does that fit in? Because you've got Kerasoft, Distributor, Zoom. What's Tackle do? They integrate? Tackle was just the integration piece that allowed us to get these transactions going forth, back and forth. So the transaction you think about, a customer will buy through the AWS contract, it'll get transacted through the AWS marketplace at, at Kerasoft, and it comes to Zoom from there. They were just, uh, Tackle.io was just the integration piece that allowed that to happen. Yeah, just a plug for Tackle.io, those guys start up that's growing really fast. They make it easy. The marketplace is not that easy. <laughs> Dave McKay would argue with me, but you know, um, it can be unwieldy, but they manage it, they make it easy. Well, if you think about typically, if you had direct integration, it would take you many months to get through that process and a lot of time. Yeah. This helped us with the marketplace being at Kerasoft, and the uh, and tackle I/O allowed us to really accelerate this relationship. I mean, that's the consumption model in the future. I mean, you're looking at from a Zoom standpoint, you look at the marketplace. That's just more distribution. That's a selling vehicle for you, right? Exactly. But it's also you think about it's a selling vehicle for us. But you think about it from the customer side. If they have a contract already in place and they have consumption, you know, minimums they have to hit, and they can be a part of a solution set now that we come together. It really becomes that, hey, yeah, it's easy use, it's a great way, but now we're giving, as we mentioned earlier, an acceleration point for our customers to drive that innovation and quickly procure it. Matt, you've been around the block on public sector, you've seen the waves of innovation over the years. Now it's kind of like the perfect storm, multiple waves colliding into a big wave with cloud and with the new normal that's coming from telemedicine to education, to military, to top secret, to distribution via marketplaces, cloud scale where there's now a new stack emerging, horizontal and vertical. What is your take on that as an industry participant? You're like, what put it in perspective, like how big is this compared to what was once other waves? Well, you know what the, the, the pandemic brought forth was, it, 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 as Max mentioned earlier today in his keynote, it really accelerated transformation. People had to do it, which would may take three to five years, took you know, weeks and months. Now we have the opportunity to go forward and really push this and say, how do we transform? While this pandemic happened, people are now, the governments are, and, and education are now looking at transformation, how they accelerate this for the next five to seven years. Because the decisions they're making, the money they're setting, and the investments they're making are transforming how they're going to do that. And they realize they cannot do it yeah. the way they did it before. Well, congratulations on all the success at Zoom for you and your teammates, uh, Eric over there as CEO, and Colin and the rest of the team, Ross Mayfield, amongst others. Uh, we love you guys, think you're a great company. Um, really made a dent in the universe in a positive way. I'm looking forward to seeing what's on the roadmap. IOT devices, edge, um, what's happening? We, we actually, it's, <laughs> it, it's great, great timing of that because we just had our Zoomtopia, so we announced a, a number of different innovative things that we've done out there, whiteboarding and such, that really is going to come forward. So I would encourage everybody to go to the Zoom website, uh, look at some of the videos we had from Zoomtopia to talk about some of the actual really cool innovative things that yeah. we've done. Yeah, I mean, I almost imagine what's the camera technology, the collaboration technology, Things are going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be what people think it's going to be. It might look different. What's your view on that? I think it's going to look, it's going to look different than it was a year ago. I think it's going to look different than two years from now. And so we're innovation. We look at, we had, oh, we had hundreds of different innovative things that occurred out there. So we look at 
you know, uh, you know, virtual classrooms, things that they have out there to change the environment to make that feel like it's a real life experience and that's what makes a di difference on us. You know, I, I, I watch think companies like Facebook saying they're going to drop 50 million into Metaverse for the next two years. They're throwing engineers at it. But also, all it points down to is a better user experience. That's the goal, right? To make that user experience uh, immersive, clean, elegant, simple, but effective. It's, it's intuitive, it's, it's the number one thing I hear from every single person. They want something easy to use, when they send them home, they want to be able to turn it on for it to work. And we had one department, one agency that sent people home, they found the productivity was, so, <laughs> was doing so well that they actually have decided to hire people in different parts of the country. It's this very specialized group around in the, the DC area. Now it's changed the whole scope of how you bring people in with these different skill sets, how not having them move to an area will be able to leverage them at a, a remote location, but really embrace that uh, expertise. Matt, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Matt Mandrock, head of public sector, U.S. public sector for Zoom. Uh, a name you're going to keep hearing about more and more. It's not going away. Establish themselves as the leader in collaboration, certainly video meetings, conferences, events. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me on theCUBE. Okay. More, more coverage from a live personal, in-person event with remote Zooms coming in. It's hybrid. It's theCUBE coverage of AWS Summit 2021 here in Washington, D.C. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. <laughs>